Hi, welcome back to Music Chemistry. This is Stoichiometry Limited and Excessive Reactants Lesson 1. Okay, it's going to be a lot of work in this, so just be patient as we work through this together, okay? A couple things we need to know. Um, we need to remember that one mole is equal to 22.4 liters, and STP, standard temperature of pressure, at 0 degrees Celsius and 1 atm. But what we need to know, though, is that you have two reactants here and you have one product. So this is a reactant, and this is the reactant, and this is the product. Often in chemical reactions, when we put reactions together, there's one reactant that has some stuff left over as it makes the product. So not all of it is used up, we call that the excessive reactant. But the reactant that gets used all up is called the limited reactant. Now we first have to determine which is the limit to reactant. And once we've determined that, we can base our amount of product based on only the limit to reactant. So let's figure out which one's the limit to reactant. Now we're given 30 grams of NO and 30 grams of O2. So what we're gonna do is we're going to convert 30 grams of NO to grams of 2NO2 and 30 grams of O2 to 2 NO2 grams. Also, the one that makes the less is our limited reactant. Okay, and then we can solve our problem. All right, so let's go ahead and let's do this. First of all, we need to know the molar mass of NO, NO2, and O2. All right, so let's go ahead and set that up here. So the molar mass of NO first. So this is N1 times 14, I believe it is, 14.01. Yeah, Look at my periodic table. Mm -hmm. And then of course we have one oxygen at 16.00. These are all in grams per mole of course. And this is going to give me a total of 30.01 grams per mole of NO. All right, what about NO2? All right, let's do that. So N is one times 14.01. O is two times 16.00. And we do the math on that, and that's gonna give us 46.01 grams per mole. And last but not least, oxygen. O2, okay, so that's going to be times 16.00. It's going to give me 32.00 grams per mole. All right, now let's go ahead and let's figure out which one is our limited reactant. Okay, here we go. So we're going to go from my grams to my moles, my moles to their moles to their grams ultimately. So, but let's do the one to react it first. So let's go here. Here we go. 30 grams of NO times one mole of NO divided by 30.01 grams of NO. We got that from the mole mass. And now we're going to convert that into moles of NO2. So we have a looks like a 2 to 2 ratio. So mole of NO over 2 moles of NO2. And now we want to convert that into grams of NO2. Forty-six point zero one grams of NO2 on top. So let's cancel the math out here. Okay, and then when we do that, we get that to be roughly looks like forty-five point five five. Let me double check that answer there real quickly. It's always important to double check your work.
And it is going to be 45.85 to be exact. Good thing we checked that. Okay, now let's take the 30 grams of O2 and see what we get. Okay, and we're doing the same thing. Now we're going to look at the mole ratio between the two there. here. Now remember, the one that makes the less is our limited reactant. Okay, let's do the math. And let's take our calculator and figure it out. Okay, this one made 86.27 grams of NO2. Ooh, so that means that this number is smaller. See that? That number is a lot smaller. So that tells me that this is my limited reactant. And that tells me that the O2 is my excessive reactant. All right, now, based upon that, let's figure out how many moles of N2 are made with 30 grams of NO. All right, so we take our limited reactant, which is going to be our NO, and we're going to convert that into moles of NO first. And then we're going to convert our ratio. So we have moles, we have two moles of NO in the bottom. And we get our two moles on top here. So we're converting it to moles of NO2. And so moles cancel moles, grams cancel grams. And the answer is going to be, let's go ahead and do a calculator real quick. It's going to be roughly 1.0 moles of NO2. All right. <clears throat> so quickly review, when we have a limited and excessive reactant, so we have to remember that one of these reactants is going to be limited, one's going to be excessive. And when we go to solve the problem with this, we have to use the limited reactant because the excessive reactant has stuff left over and not all of it gets used up. Well, that's it for this lesson, guys. You be snarly, and we'll see you back here at Moosing Chemistry.